Namaste beautiful yogis. Today we are talking about health and I just wanted to come on and do a more detailed video about yeast infection. It's literally an email that I get so often and I've been typing these long emails <laughs> at least a couple times a week lately to some of my followers or to people that are inquiring because the regular dietary advice is not giving producing enough results or people are inquiring, they're asking me uh, what my approach would be because I'm a little unconventional or I should say it's not that unconventional but you can find this information when you google it. The first google search results usually a little bit of the mainstream stuff that sometimes it's just the opposite of what works. <laughs> I don't know why but that's how google has been working lately. and. Um, I have had interest in healing and in herbology and in spiritual healing and in mindfulness way before I started being interested in yoga. So this is my first love. Yoga is just a small tool in quieting the mind and deepening your awareness or deepening your connection to your to your depth, to your roots, to your higher consciousness, to the um, expansion of your consciousness to connecting with higher consciousness awareness with oneness etc but you know we have to take all the um, tools that are provided to us and deepen our understanding because our health is in our own hands okay i i digress <laughs> let's go back to the subject um, yeast infection is a form of candida overgrowth and usually it may not be just the candida, it can be other um, yeasts and cross reaction to fungi, to molds, etc. But it's usually an overgrowth of non-beneficial bacteria that should be there but not in excess and what happens if it it overgrows and it feeds on sugar. So the general advice is avoid all sugar, don't eat any fruit because that's going to raise your blood sugar levels. And that has already been proven so many times not to be true, but that's the predominant advice. If you take, there has been studies that took two groups of people, I'll try to put links below of studies, two groups of people and they would feed them a high fat diet and a high sugar diet. We're talking candy, not good sugar. And within two days, the high fat diet starts to have really high blood sugar and insulin resistance already. And the lower fat, high sugar group is starting to have amazing blood sugar. And why that is, is because we all need blood sugar. Basically, when we eat, starches convert to glucose in the gut and then they get released in the bloodstream. From the bloodstream, they have to go into the muscle cells for energy the next day. And you will know that if you work out with me, once you work out, run to the kitchen, eat, eat, eat whole foods that have high sugar in them, but also a little bit of minerals, protein, vitamins, uh, fats, just a little bit. And that will power your workouts the next day. So what happens is once you eat the starches, they convert it into glucose, blood sugar, goes into the bloodstream and what you need is insulin. Insulin opens up the cells so that the blood sugar can go into the muscle cells and out of the bloodstream. What happens is when you eat a lot of fat, the more fat you eat, the worse it gets. It begins to coat and create almost like a dirty residue in the cells and it gunks up the mechanism that allows the blood sugar to go from the bloodstream into the muscle cell. What happens when the blood sugar cannot go into the bloodstream, uh, into the muscle cells from the bloodstream? It circulates in the bloodstream and builds up higher and higher. The more sugar you eat, the higher it gets because of the fat gunking up, being sticky in the mechanism that allows the sugar to go into the muscle cell. So that creates the high blood sugar and insulin resistance and pre-diabetes, diabetes, diabetes 2, uh, etc. For diabetes 1, it's a little different. It's an autoimmune disease in which the pancreas is damaged and doesn't produce insulin. So it's a little different. Uh, it, not a little. It's actually completely different as a condition, although they're both called diabetes. But the, in a diabetes 2, it's a created by the lifestyle of the person, the diet of that person, and the person is producing insulin. 
It's just that the insulin doesn't work in letting anything into the muscle cells because they're having too high fat diet and that creates blood sugar and over time that can be really aging and damaging to all your internal organs, tissues, etc. And we see people losing their legs and it's just really not, a, it's such a dangerous disease but it's so predominant and diabetic patients often are told to eat uh, low fat, uh, sorry, low sugar, high fat in order to keep their blood sugar level and they have these dips of blood sugar, high blood sugar all, all over the place, eating junk sugar, then lots of meat and fat which is the cause for diabetes and it's a vicious cycle in the end of which they end up losing their life or losing their um, vital body parts. Or, and actually my partner's um, father, he was a diabetic um, food surgeon. He was cutting off um, necrotic tissue from uh, diabetic legs. And he was saying that um, the research had shown, while well, he was alive, he was telling me those things, uh, that the research has shown that after the patients lose their leg, their lifespan is greatly reduced. They just don't live long after. So it's an unnecessary thing. Now, candida and yeast infection is just the beginning stages of that, showing you that something with your diet is not right. And usually, it's not just your diet. We are bombarded with toxins. Our environment is really toxic. It's not like back in the day before we had all the um, pesticides, pesticides in the air, pesticides in our food, exposure to fungicides, to fire retardants, exposure to paints and all kinds of chemicals, chemtrails, etc. So our bodies are not necessarily functioning as clearly as they should. That's why we need to kind of fine tune them always with uh, yoga exercise so that the digestive organs are working properly, eliminating properly, detoxing properly, and our diets need to be on point. Take the traditional Japanese or Chinese diet from not now, from back in the day. It was starch-based, 10% fat. So if you have yeast infection, I know this was a very long intro, so maybe I will call this video not yeast infection, but I'll call it candida yeast infection because it's both, and blood sugar. Once you adopt a higher sugar diet from whole foods, it has to be from whole foods, otherwise it's not healthy, sorry, but processed foods, even if they're low in fat, they're not healthy, they don't, they're like, nutrients that the body needs so they would lead to cravings and just other issues um, once you adopt a high um, starch or a high carb or hydrate diet and a lower fat diet your blood sugar will regulate now if you have an yeast infection an yeast infection can be in your stomach too uh, just yeast overgrowth in the stomach creates bloating not even bloating when you're not eating say you're standing your belly is fine and all of a sudden it bloats that's yeast um, if yeast infection can show itself in many ways yeast infection vaginal yeast infection is one of them stomach candida overgrowth is another way there is just different variations of it but if you consider or are thinking you might have candida it can be from mold exposure it can be from your diet, it can be from other toxic load in the body and or prolonged junk food diet that just kind of slowly throws the body off and just certain mechanisms in the body start functioning not optimally. So once you adopt a high carbohydrate diet, you'll see that your blood sugar will naturally um, regulate. I have eaten literally many t uh, tablespoons of honey and have gone 20-30 minutes later to have my blood sugar drawn and my blood sugar is on point, literally on point, 90 or uh, whatever um, on point is because I was in Bulgaria so it's a different, I don't remember if it was the same um, numbers there that they used. So I'll try to, uh, to uh, find my blood test and maybe include it below. So sugar will not throw your blood sugar off. As long as your uh, diet is low in fat, you can eat your whole foods, honey is actually a naturally anti-fungal food, very healing when you're sick, it's extremely healing and it's the only non-animal uh, food I, I have, it's the only non-vegan food that I have, 
So I'm a vegan, vegan, vegan. Uh, but as long as your uh, fats are low, you can have your sugars and your blood sugar will be fine. Now, if you have a really bad candida overgrowth, I have received emails of people that really have struggled with it for years, 10 years, 20 years, um, five years, even a year, it's a little too long, then you're gonna have to go on a healing protocol. The healing protocol is listen carefully. Uh, because I'm gonna try to get through it, <laughs> is a uh, high carbohydrate diet, fresh fruit is my pref preferred choice, but starches would theoretically work. I have not tested it on myself, except for with starches from kabocha squash and potatoes, because they're whole foods again, but no grains, but grains would work. The problem with grains is that they sometimes in the process of drying have mold on them, so that may create cross-reaction. If grains do not work for you when you go on high carb, then maybe drop the grains out and see if that will work. Potatoes, carrots, those are good starches. Um, kabocha. I personally, when I had to heal, I did fruit. I did grapes. That's your best choice of grape because Google the grape diet or the grape cure, I think. It's a little pamphlet from the 1800s about a woman that healed uh, um, cancer that had spread throughout her entire body on a grape fast. So I'm packing a lot of information here, so really listen to the video if it's going so fast. But you will adopt a high carb diet, either from um, fruits or from starches. If you adopt from starches, like say you cannot get enough fruit wherever you live, then um, try first sweet potatoes and put grains as the last resort. You can have grains later once you're healed. You will drop your fats. If your candida is really bad, drop the overt ha fats completely. Overt means whole foods high in fat. That would be avocados, coconuts, nuts, seeds. You can have a little bit of fat. Use chronometer.com. It's a website where you can enter what you have eaten for the day and it will give you um, a graph of percentage of fats that came from uh, calories, a percentage of calories from fats that came from the day. Keep it under 10 only for the healing stage, which can be very long for some people and very short for other people. Pretty much if you have had something for a long time, it will take you longer to heal it. I think the um, years you have had something it can equ equate the months or the weeks that you would um, need to heal it depending on how deep the condition is. So the longer you have dealt with something, it will take you a long time to heal it. Now, the candida will clean up quickly. Uh, as long as you're on a low fat, high fruit, fruit, I said grapes, ripe oranges, those are your best bets. Melons, melons sit them on their own. Um, I would avoid dates for the healing uh, period because in the process of drying, they are dried fruit. They do have mold on the surface, just natural mold that is very safe for humans such as everything around us have uh, molds, we breathe molds from the air, but when you are healing sometimes you are very reactive to small things, natural things that are not bad for human health in normal circumstances. So dates can be something you can put out for, uh, for a few weeks, put it to the side for a few weeks, go to the fresh fruits and uh, soft leafy greens because the leafy greens will sanitize your system and carry molds out. They have a sanitizing effect on your internal organs. On, they're like a broom that just sweeps all the molds and yeasts and uh, toxins and such out of the body and they help you regulate your blood sugar faster. They also keep you satisfied. What I personally did was Fruit during the day, just grapes, grapes, grapes. I bought uh, cases of grapes uh, from an organic farmer. And at dinner, I'll have a massive salad of soft leafy greens with uh, tomatoes, cucumbers, um, and such vegetables, zucchinis, etc. You can have broccoli and cauliflower if you can tolerate them. I tolerate them well, but for some people, they can wait a little bit for the digestion to build stronger for those more fibrous heart veggies. You can steam them if you want to. You can keep it raw if you want to. Raw has its benefits. It's very beneficial even to raising your vibrations, but steamed is just as good in many occasions. So don't be completely extremist. 
stay very low fat, 5 to 10% for the healing period, which can be a couple of days. Candida's lifespan is really short, so you should clean it up real fast. Yeast infection vaginally, you will take boric acid. We actually um, Google the boric conspiracy. Uh, boric um, as uh, boron is really low in the soils and we um, some people suggest that we all are very uh, deficient in boron which causes a lot of problems including fungal issues so uh, you will take boric acid like the 20 mil brand or whatever in America in Europe you just get it in a pharmacy and you will put a little bit like half you take a empty capsule you can empty a capsule in your cabinet of herbs or whatever Put half of the capsule to a full capsule of boric acid. Pure boric acid, 99.9% .9 is what you will buy. It's it's something that's mined from the earth. It's pure. It's safer than salt. Uh, and you will insert it vaginally, usually once or twice. And it will solve the issue. But um, you will have to continue eating low fat for until your blood sugar is super stable. And you can test it. Eat low fat for a while and start including avocados and still get over 10%, 12-15. I personally, for a lifetime, eat like that. 15% uh, when I'm breastfeeding and on certain days when I want to include more avocado. But in general, my diet has continuously been lower fat because that provides me with very good energy for working out, feeling good, feeling light, never having digestive issues, sleeping well. All the things that we kind of need in life to be to feel good. Some fat, postmenopause, a little more fat postmenopause, maybe a little more fat during pregnancy. I personally didn't increase my fat, but I increased my calories. So naturally, I ate a little more fat, but not percentage-wise. Um, breastfeeding is one time when you can listen to your cravings, but don't go to 40% fat because that would just throw uh, your blood sugar off and that's not worth it having all these spikes and ups and downs it's not fun so I do remember that before I knew how to eat properly on the vegan diet I did have blood sugar and blood pressure issues I had very low blood pressure and I would have blood sugar issues I had mold exposure and I had blood sugar dips and faintiness and so all of that which all resolved on a low fat high nutrient dense in nutrients diet which is grains and veggies and fruits and some starches and later on once you have eaten like this uh, for two days to two weeks three weeks a month you can increase your fat and see if your candida comes back if it comes back then it's not enough you haven't you haven't strengthened your body enough sometimes it depends how long you've been sick if for some people they will balance their blood sugar quickly and for others it will take a while eating really clean for a while and don't think it's a prison like it's a sentence that you're so restrictive eating have exceptions if you want to have a little bit of nut milk it's fine as long as you don't get into the really fat percentage um, punch everything in chronometer so you know your fats and you see it will work if you have good results with, uh, with this uh, protocol comment below I know it's um, a little bit of an embarrassing subject so a lot of people private me mess um, message me privately I just had two massively crazy workouts I'm surprised that I can string a sentence together <laughs> but message me privately because it's a delicate subject and I figured you know what, I've been typing long messages to so many people. Let me put it out there and people will find it, hopefully. If it helps one or two people, I guess it was worth my time. Obviously, more people, the more people will benefit from it, the better. But Google the studies. I'll try to link the studies below because the regular Candida diet, um, I, you know, there is a Candida diet book. It recommends that you do... Uh, a lot of fermented foods and a lot of fats and no sugar for a while, no no starch, no sugar, no fruit and it tells you that it will take you a year to heal. No, it will take you literally a few days to clear the candida out of the body but if you don't keep up with the diet it will come back because your body is weakened and the, it's, it's, it has not built its own bacterial flora. You want to build a really strong bacterial flora so even when you eat fats the candida doesn't overgrow. 
Fermented foods are no no during the healing phase because they're naturally an yeast and malt breeding ground. They're not necessarily healthy. They were developed by Europeans or whatever, uh, maybe by uh, most places in the world where there was no refrigeration and they needed food for the winter. It was naturally raw and high in enzymes, so it was better than not having food, but it's certainly not better than fresh food. If you have cabbage and sauerkraut, fresh cabbage is far better and the white powder on the outside of the cabbage is guess what probiotics the white powder outside of the grapes is guess what probiotics from the environment that's why when you soak cabbage with salt and water the probiotics take off and it becomes sauerkraut that's why when you soak grapes they turn into wine because the probiotics the lactobacillus takes off so you will get probiotics from your fresh foods if you don't have um, access to fresh food, fresh cabbage, fresh grapes, take a probiotic capsule. I'll try to include one that is good. Um, they're, they're not all created equal. Some probiotics are not good for you. It's better to uh, get most of everything from your um, food, but probiotics can be helpful, especially with, you know, food supply not being very good in many places in the world. So, um, did I cover everything? I think I did. Probiotics, um, obviously meat is one of the highest, uh, the foods that is the highest cause for diabetes. Um, so that, for me, it's a no-no also because of the compassion factor. It is proven to cause heart disease in many people. So it goes beyond just blood, high blood sugar. Now it goes into, uh, you know, heart, uh, the precursor to causing heart attack and stroke, etc. So. Uh, it is best to reduce it greatly, no judgment, if you cannot, that's fine, everybody has their own path, their own way of doing things and how they uh, approach life, but if you can, that would be amazing, because if you do uh, veganism right, I don't want to call it a ism, but if you do um, a compassionate diet right, uh, it will give you a lot, it will give you a lot of feeling good about it, um, feeling physically good about it, and that's a whole other subject. If you're not doing well on um, your diet, whether it is plant-based or not, it, it all starts here with the mind. We all create everything with the mind. We have to constantly work on how we visualize the future. We're the creators of our, of our health and of our life so if we're constantly in a place of um, depression doubt um, we create poor health regardless of diet so that is just a secondary tool to attitude in life and connection to um, wisdom connection to truth connection to love that's where we anchor ourselves diet yoga those things are tools they're they're good and mostly necessary, but not the predictor, not not the creator of, not the most important thing. The most important thing is connection to truth, to love, to higher consciousness, to God or however, the divine, however you want to call it, but understanding that, that, that thing that if, it's hard to, that is something that is hard to talk about or describe because it's a feeling. It's something that, it's an experience. It's something that experience, once you have that experience, there's no words that you can put it in. There's nothing you can, like, there's no way you can describe it. So that is the whole goal of us trying to be healthy, is to create a space so we can have that experience and be prepared to ascend, <laughs> to be prepared to awaken uh, so that is my video on yeast infection I'll try to list resources below about boric acid and everything thanks for watching and if you have questions about it I'll be happy to uh, answer and uh, namaste